Hey everyone, this is Corey with Stafford ZBC, and today we're taking a look at the Kaiser Knives Militol. Now, sorry, we're a little bit close. Let me just back this up slightly. Sorry. That's better. It's a little bit of a longer knife, so tough to get it all in frame. Should have done this when I filmed my Momo review just a few minutes ago. Now, yes, the Militol here, uh, titanium frame lock with some interestingly shaped micarta inlays. This one has black micarta. Um, there are some other versions out there, I believe. This is the one that I'm looking at on the Kaiser website at the moment. And this one is designed by, let me grab that information for you. Is it not gonna tell you? It just says Jonathan's new design, Militaw. So, this is designed by someone named Jonathan. Jonathan Style, that's his name. And I bet you I could have told you that because this says Style's Design on the blade. So, shout out to me for looking nice and close on this. You can see it says Militaw by the uh, hole there. Kind of Kaiser Standard billboarding. Your blade steel right there. S35VN. The thing is killing me here. There you go, now you can see it. And of course, the Kaiser logo on the blade. Stonewash Titanium milled pocket clip sitting on top of these micarta inlays. A very attractive uh, shape for a knife, in my opinion. I kind of like this geometric look uh, with the angles and the lines. Um, I'll talk about some things that I don't love about this aesthetically and in practice in a moment, but overall, you have 7.99 inches of knife, a 3.35 inch blade, handle length of 4.65 inches, and a blade stock thickness of 0.12. And this is coming in at a weight of 3.92 ounces, so just shy of four ounces. I will say it doesn't feel overly heavy or anything like that. There was this big craze about really lightweight knives uh, when the Finchley Bug Out came out a few years ago. But I've noticed I care less and less about it. As time goes on, I still don't want like a brick or anything in my pocket, but over an ounce an inch is fine. Totally fine with me. Now, the action on this knife is really good. It is a little bit tighter at the moment than it was, but it almost wants to drop shut on its own. You can see just a little bit of movement to the upright position gets this thing to close on its own very nice action and I don't know if um, these were replaced by with skiffs or anything um, this is a pass around knife so it has been with lefty EDC so there's a good chance that this knife has been slightly tinkered with um, but I can't tell looking down uh, into the knife I don't see like your typical skiff coloring down in there like the copper cage or anything so I think it might be a uh, totally stock which is cool uh, regardless the actions really good and the uh, ergos are really solid too we're a large size glove my finger fits right into that groove and then the rest of my hand wraps around the knife no problem whether it's a saber grip or a hammer grip super comfortable now the one thing I don't like about this is this big area here of nothingness on the bolster and that's because when you're holding it closed you're far away from the blade I like to be near the blade when I'm holding a knife closed personally I find it gives better control and you can choke up you can put your middle finger here and choke up there but it's not the most comfortable so kind of find yourself back here away from the blade um, which I can understand some people might want but not for me personally, I like to be right up on the blade. Um, not in a non-safe way, but if just if this cutout was longer, maybe. If uh, this was just a slightly bigger area, I think that would work uh, much better, personally. But you never know. Um, they might have tried something like that before they came up with this. But that is essentially my only gripe about this knife. You have a fairly thin grind on the S35VM blade. And it cuts really well. You're dealing with a flat grind all the way up through through the blade with a very small portion of flat 
right here, and then this large swedge um, along the clip point here. I might be calling this a drop point, and they are. Um, this almost makes it look like a clip point, uh, that really long and almost aggressive looking swedge. Uh, a blade shape that I really enjoy on this. As I said, super comfortable in hand. Uh, this micarta has nice grip to it. It's not polished or anything, so your fingers have somewhere that's nice and positive to land. You can feel when you have this knife in your purchase. Uh, your fingers land right on that micarta, and it's a much nicer uh, feel to it than the titanium. It has some kind of really like soft blast done to it. You can see some snail trails here. And it's uh, it's not like grippy or anything, but it's also not a glass blast. Um, it looks fine. It looks good in terms of the color. Um, but something grippier would be kind of nice, like a rougher sand blast. Maybe something akin to what uh, Chris Reeves does. Um, maybe not that aggressive, but something similar would be really nice to see. Give you some even darker contrast. Um, and would provide some more meaningful grip in the areas where you're not contacting the uh, micarta. That's the word. As it stands now, my fingers pretty much just laying on the micarta, but if you wanted to do some kind of a pinch grip up near the pivot, you might want that. All the opening methods on this knife work fine. Front flipper, thumb, and reverse flick, no problem. If you're left-handed, I wouldn't expect it to be much of a problem either. I'm not left-handed, so you might see me struggle a bit, but that doesn't mean it's hard if you are left-handed. So keep that in mind. You can see I got pretty much everything, no problem, minus the thumb flick, which my nail's a little bit longer than normal because of the regular slip joint carry I've been doing. Um, I can slow roll it just fine. I just don't think my dexterity is there to not push on this lock bar and push on the blade at the same time. But it's no problem at all for the reverse flick, which I know is what more of you care about uh, than thumb opening. And of course, you can front flip no problem as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, this clip is not reversible. Um, it is a little bit uncomfortable as a lefty. My fingers land directly on the clip, which is always a big no for me. Uh, so keep that in mind if you are left-handed. This might not be the knife for you just because of that. Um, yeah, keep that in mind. Otherwise, this has been a pleasure to carry and use. A really nice, easy carry. You know, your typical titanium frame lock. You know, what, what else is new in the world? I mean, technically, I guess it's a sub frame lock. You can see that this is... Uh, not This isn't moving here, so... That is a part of a different piece entirely. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool actually. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's neat. The uh, the lock bar is cut in here, so it is definitely a frame lock, um, just hidden underneath the scale slightly. So it's a bolster lock. There you go. Many of you would have already known that and pointed that out, but I just wasn't paying enough attention looking over this guy. And to be honest with you, it calls it a frame lock on the Kaiser website too, so take that as you will. But I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, neat, but, you know, neat design. Not necessarily my cup of tea, but I like it on here. I like the way that the angles match up. Let me know what you think down below about these inlays, and if you'd like to see more of that potentially in the future, maybe we can see that on some other Kaiser models. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to hear from you down below. Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.